Okay, so here's something a little different today. Um, if anybody out there is interested in vintage calculators, here we have a Casio JR110 um, desk calculator that, well, not really a desk calculator. I'm so presumingly it would be considered portable because it's got you can put batteries in it. Uh, I picked this up for buck ninety nine at the local thrift store, and um, yeah. So just taking a quick look at it, it's got power switch on off print or off on and then switch it over print on and. Um, not sure what this switch is for. F cut and five quarters. Um, that might be for feed selection. I'm not sure. Um, and our uh, standard decimal switch over here. So um, keys, we got um, print key, clear all, uh, positive, negative, percent, clear, divide, multiply equals standard number pad memory plus memory minus um, m one of these is memory total it's total and subtotal I believe um, and again these are total or subtotal I'm I don't remember and um, minus plus and an it key. I'm not sure what the it key does. Um, but for a small calculator like this, I'm kind of surprised that it has the rolling style printer on it. Now, um, you can see that. But that whole drum rotates, and then this back plate here taps the paper against the uh, drum and that's well the whole ro drum doesn't rotate we'll take this apart um, later but first let's see if it works um, but yeah that's the cover for the paper just snaps on there like that bottom cover here we have and we have the ink roller in here which I believe is still good to an extent and I'm, I would guess this can be re-inked I don't think it matters which way it goes in I think I took it out like that and that just snaps in Let's put some batteries in here. It takes just four AA batteries. I've got a few old batteries. They're not matching or anything, but hopefully they're good. I'm not even sure if they're good or not. If they're not, well, we'll find more batteries. And I don't have the small paper for this, so I just cut a strip of um, typing paper, standard. Eight and a half by eleven. Let's feed that in there. All right. There's a little wheel on the side here for the paper advance. So now let's see if it works. And nothing. Wonder if I got the batteries in wrong. Yep. Oh. They actually all go in facing positive towards the side of the case. That's different. Alright, now let's see if it works. Ah. Let's see, 25 plus 25 
Up. Okay, so this uses um, reverse Polish notation like the older uh, calculators did, uh, where the equal sign doesn't really exist. Um, 25 plus 25, or plus. And then if you'd want to subtract 25, 25 minus. Well, that's because that's clear. Um, 25 plus 25 plus and then subtract 10 minus and we get 40. Um, you hit your function key after the number that you hit. Uh, the multiply and divide use the equal keys. 12 times 2 equals 24. That's why as you can see divide multiply it equals or on this side of the keypad positive and negative or plus and minus or on this side of the keypad now what's the it key do clears it to zero i don't know what that's supposed to be for uh let's see if the printer works print on oh we got a c on there clear okay let's see 25 plus 10 plus 56 14 times 2 huh okay we get a clear 6 5 or 6 4 5 2 and zero. Yeah, something's not right with that printer. Okay, turn it off, let's take it apart. Okay, so if there's anybody interested in the details of this, it's a Casio JR-110, uh, six volt DC, six watt, use battery 1.5 volt times four, or AC adapter AD-4150, made in Japan, by Casio Computer Company Limited. And it appears to be that it would be my guess would be the serial number is 7006485. All right, so let's take this thing apart and see uh, if we can get that printer working. There's just four screws. And my bit on here is just a bit too small. But it will do. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to try and find another screwdriver. Let's see if this one here is long enough to reach down in there. Yeah, barely, but it reaches. Apologize for the camera shake. All right. So now let's see. Our keypad here is just on a um, flat flex cable here. And let's see if we can take a look at the circuit board there. It's got a um, VFD um, vacuum fluorescent display. Uh, a few um, transformers. Here's the main uh, chip, which is a HD 3858.9. Looks like Hitachi. Um, don't recognize the branding on these two chips here. My guess is these have something to do with driving the display. 
and here is our printer mod um, printer assembly back here which this is the drive roller which is just kind of spring loaded there and here is our number wheel now let's see how that's mounted in there and how that's attached looks as though it's soldered in so <clears throat> it's going to be interesting trying to figure out how to get that out of there I think it's just held in by the two screws here which aren't even held in there very tight. Oh, because they're actual um, screws and there's a little nut on the bottom. All right. Is that out? Not quite. There we go. Okay, and another flat flex cable. So that's going to be somewhat. Oh, and that's there's it's actually on a rubber little rubber mounting there. On the bottom of the printer there, it's actually an Epson printer. Uh, model 723 Shinshuseki Corp Company Limited, made in Japan, patent pending. And there's our um, roller that you access through the bottom. Um, so as far as these wheels, like the first few digits worked. But after that, they didn't seem to do anything. So, let's actually put the batteries back in here and see if we can get it to do anything while it's powered up. Okay, so it's not working. Um, this one wheel here appears to be not attached for some reason whereas the other ones this one's awfully loose and um, this little I don't know if that's a clip or if that's something broken popped out of here but it appears that the only way I'm going to actually be able to work on this thing is if I just desolder the um, this flat flex from here so I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera and we'll be back in a little bit to tear this printer down a little bit more. <laughs> 